Three, two, one, go. We, we want, want to, to live, live in, in a van. 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 A Hey, I'm Peeps. My name is Ilya. And I'm Azra. And welcome to the vlog. So as you probably noticed, we don't live in a van yet. This is not our flat. This is a cafe of our beautiful city. Recently, my lifestyle has become very ad hoc. I spent a lot of the time out somewhere else because I do mountain tours. I go on tours with a band. I go on tours with a choir. I pretty much spend six to eight months away from home. If I'm out of the house eight months a year, is it really cost efficient to have a house or an apartment or whatnot? And that's how I bumped into van life, started researching it, and since then been liking it more and more. The more I read about it, the more I watched different pieces of content about it, the more I liked it to the point that regardless of what kind of lifestyle I would be leading, the whole concept of van life just seemed amazing to me. Amazing. Despite all the amazing aspects, it would be the biggest change and the biggest investment of my life. So it's definitely a lot to think about and consider. So we compiled a list of 30 reasons. Just want to share them with you, right? Before we dive in, I want to give a huge thanks to the Matneys, AKA Chris and Aubrey, because they let us use a lot of their footage and because we don't have any van videos of our own just yet. Thank you, Chris and Aubrey. Thank you. I divided these reasons into six main categories, though they're not very specifically cut out. They kind of all blend into each other. And they are mobility, health, environment, social, minimalism, finance, and content. That's actually seven. Yeah, <laughs> seven. And so, of course, we're starting with the main aspect, which is mobility or the ability to move your home around with you as you go. Number one. Which is travel. Let's make it appear here somewhere. Travel. Right here. Travel means you can discover all kinds of cool destinations, go for adventures, see new things, learn new things. It's also tied into health because um, discovery and all, all that good stuff is important for especially developing young people. Moving on to number two. Which is being away from the cities uh, and spending more time in nature as we are right now. It is well known that city life and spending time in the city is very negative for your health including pollution and being in especially more traditional societies so it's kind of a win-win plus i love nature very much i made her like nature too so i love nature <laughs> the city is, is of course full of people and when when you're all the time surrounded by a lot of people then you just forget how important and how unique you are and that can lead to depression, anxiety, and just feeling that there's no point living amazing life. Bam. Number three. Number three is climate chasing, um, which is the definition for traveling from where it's warm to where it's warm, or depending if you don't like warm, then from where it's cold to where it's cold, which means you don't have to worry about heating a Freezing. specific type yeah. of climate then you can spend more time in it. We enjoy something in between. In between, yeah. So it means you can spend winter in the south where it's moderately mm -hmm. cold, not too much, and then some in the north where it's cooler. Number four is uh, emergency relocation. So in the case of a natural or man-made catastrophe like a war or earthquake or things like that, it's very easy to just pack your things and leave where it's temporarily or permanently. It's yes. kind of a insurance that makes you feel just a little bit safer than yeah. having to dump and leave everything behind. Because you off. can take all, all of your belongings, all of your home, you can take your home. Which you. hopefully we won't have a lot of. What? Belongings. belongings? I mean, the van is a belonging, so yeah. you can take it with you. And people you love. I'm just that takes us to the next category of health, whether it's a physical, mental health, learning, change, everything related to being a wholesome human being. Yes, and health is really, really important topic for us. So a primary aspect of being healthy is being more connected with nature, which we already mentioned. Um, and it affects your biophysical patterns, which is, for example, when you go to sleep and when you wake up, if you are more connected to the way the sun goes up and goes down in the morning, people say that you get a lot more quality rest, which makes you more efficient during the day and happier overall. So moving on to number six. 
which is better food. So when you travel, you have a lot of access to better organic food, the food that you want to eat, the food that is, the food that is out of the city, so grown on some uh, farms and, and you know where it comes from, which is a I cannot do this. You're good. <laughs> okay, numbers, you say number seven. Number seven. Number seven! Less internet! <laughs> <laughs> well, less internet is good, it's better for your health, less waves floating around the air, more time to spend communicating with real people, being outside, walking, you know, taking walks and things like that. And it's also better financially because you don't have to pay for all that mobile networks, Wi-Fi's you have in the house, whatever other forms of connection you have, you kind of narrow it down to, I can imagine the traveling, being in the mountains, having to have a secure connections can nullify the financial aspect, but overall that is a segment we didn't want to ignore. And just imagine how many time you spend actually on your phone. Shame on you. Then we feel guilty and just feel out of control. Number? Number eight is learning construction skills. That's particularly important for me because via, I didn't have so much contact with construction and things like that, handyman things. And I think I can learn a lot of it by building our own van, maybe two or three vans, depending on where our life takes us which kind of helps you learn all those basics plus all kinds of home ma maintenance skills things like that so for someone who doesn't have a lot of contact with that in their life this would make a perfect opportunity i've already done hundreds of hours of research on the topic so now it's just a matter of um, putting into practice and actually creating something number nine <laughs> can i hate me <laughs> nine <laughs> <laughs> Number nine. <laughs> then life requires uh, freelance freelance jobs. Then life requires freelance jobs, uh, which are important, of course, for living in a van and traveling because you're not uh, going to be at the same place every day. Freelance jobs, such as for me, are online teaching which I already started and know something about and, and of course learning about and for Ilya, what? Yeah, and I have my seasonal mountain tours, I have my photo and video shoots. So those are things which are pretty flexible and a lot of those can be done digitally um, on the road, especially when I'm editing videos or, or pictures. And the important thing about freelance jobs is that they help you have flexible hours, which in turn gives you more free time. It helps you have less stress, which is why this is in the health category in the first place. It helps you escape the daily routine of having, uh, of going to work and work there for how many hours every day and just doing the same things over and over again and being bored and then finally going home and feeling stressed and just tired to do anything after. And that brings us to environment section. And number 10. Uh, a van life makes you more conscious of the environment as in your consumption and your waste since you do not always have access to clean water or electricity or gas or whatever else you need in your van. It helps you think twice before you turn on the water, before you use any of your devices and I think that's a skill we all need to have in a planet that's slowly dying and sustainability and consciousness is a very big conversation that the world is having right now. So this is kind of um, forcing you to be more mindful of that. Um, again, despite of how van life may end or continue, those are just parts of your mindset yeah, just that you should grateful, be exercising. Yeah. We are not always going to have access to water and internet and, and all the other things. And then we are grateful right now that we have all of those things. And we try to um, prepare for, we already started to shower less and blah, blah, blah and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 But now the sun's in our face, so should be changing location. My legs are oh, hot. I like fell asleep. Number 11. So while traveling, obviously your fuel consumption goes up. However, in the same time, your consumption of um, water power 
and space that you take up with your lifestyle can actually compensate and even more for that. So, you know, you might be spending more on fuel, doing, giving a little bit more pollution, but then because you're not using as much water, as much power, and living much more sustainably, it kind of balances out. And connected to that is number 12. Yes, which is again, even though you are uh, doing some kind of pollution, you still are not driving every day throughout the cities and you don't have as many families have two cars. That takes us to the next social section. Ooh, number 13. Number 13 <laughs> is just learning all kinds of new things. I mean, traveling, van life, everything's new about it so there is absolutely no way that you can be living that lifestyle without learning new things about life that brings us to number 14 and it's very obvious that close proximity brings people together now we do hear a lot that when you see someone all day long you do need to control your time with yourself a little bit more spend time on walks alone or meditating things like that but generally when you live so close to someone and you spend all of your day together you tend to know them better learn how to spend your time together better and i think that's great um, for building relationships and you learn a lot about yourself while being with someone else that close because you actually learn about uh, boundaries, about what really frustrates you, what really makes you happy, and uh, how well do you actually know that person. Number 15 is inspiring people to be more healthy because as a um, vlogger, photographer, a social media type person, I, I like to encourage people, share my lifestyle with them. So essentially by advocating and encouraging a healthy lifestyle, we can encourage and motivate people to change some of their own habits as well. Yes, and it makes you happier because you feel that you, that you actually make someone think about it doesn't have to be that some kind of a decision making but just thinking about it makes you feel better it makes you feel uh, happier and makes you feel more connected to other people tied into that is number 16 which is inspiring to people to be more environmentally conscious especially in this part of the world um, Eastern Europe where people are still not at the level of thinking about the future and the sustainability of the planet um, it's just our little tiny contribution to help people be conscious about it that little bit more. A little bit more. Number 17. Is also tied into these, they're all kind of in one bunch. Um, and that is educating people about alternative lifestyles. A lot of people here don't know that you can live in a tiny house or that there's such a thing called an earth ship or that you can travel the world, live in a van on a very small budget. And I think that's an, a huge obstacle for young people who can discover themselves, learn new things, find a new way to lead life, maybe new career paths. And this will, again, make a little step into educating people. And number 18, which is not as important as the ones we previously mentioned, but also important is to entertain people. I, I myself can spend hours on YouTube and Instagram just watching what other van lifers do. So I hope that we can um, provide that kind of content for people to sit back and enjoy. And if for some reason they are not able to live the lifestyle or make a step towards it, they can observe and um, pull a little bit of satisfaction and peace from our adventures and our stories. That takes us to the section of minimalism, um, which is pretty much cutting off all the fat and leaving the bare essentials. Yeah. So essentially you're training, trading all the things that are not needed, which are causing you extra stress, extra working time in exchange for the happiness you get from not having all that baggage. Number 19 is using less water whether it is for your dishes or your cooking or your showering so that could involve how many times you shower per week or how much water you spend when you're washing dishes and you're brushing your teeth yeah that's the guy that was made in the cartoon after him he's jumping yeah did you see the cartoon about this yeah. he was made after this really it kind of balances itself out and then under number 20 and number 21 is using less power again you don't have to worry about how long you're driving to charge up your batteries or how sunny it is um, instead of building huge power banks and having 100 solar panels you're just very mindful of what's on in your house how long you're using your computer whether it's necessary to use your gadgets for that long in return for 
those little added percentages of happiness. And of course, number 21 is all the space we waste by living in a house. Having a oh, bathroom yeah. that is empty for 95% of the days, having a kitchen that is empty 70% of the days, having a bedroom that you only use when you sleep. Those are all huge wastes of space while there are thousands of people out there who don't have a home. Um, and, and I you think- feeling, Yeah, you're feeling empty. Living in an empty house with just a lot of space. Uh, and cramping your life into three square meters yeah. is a great way of understanding what's essential, what's necessary, mm -hmm. and how much of your life and, and your time is actually required to be maintaining all that instead of doing it, something you love instead. So that's not to say that we judge anyone for living the normal yes. lifestyle. Yes, yes, we, do, we don't judge anyone. We think that there are uh, pretty amazing things about living in a house, having a house, living with your family, just being on one place, sometimes going on a weekend. We don't think that's bad or that this is uh, the only lifestyle you can have that is good, but we just choose this one because we feel that it's better for us. Okay, I'm tired of this rock. Rocky! Number 22. If you live in the city, to have to afford all that life, you have to work more to earn more. But... Yes, if you work less, then you have more free time to, to do... To spend with your partner or your family, mm -hmm. doing things yeah. you love, traveling, or just hanging out and just lying in the learning field. learning new things, eating, just so many things. Yeah, I like that one. Eating, traveling, eating, yeah. You can take a lot of naps anywhere. So to summarize all this under point 23, it's pretty much cutting the fat of your lifestyle because van life requires the bare minimalism. And I really like that. It's one of the reasons why I got into this and planning to building up yeah. for it, saving up for it. That brings us to the financial category. Ooh, now we're talking. Two, four, 24, my age, bro. So, so in Western Europe, life is pretty expensive and pretty much um, one year of living, paying your bills, paying your rent and things like that, for the amount of money you could spend for that same amount, you could pretty much convert an entire van. Now in Eastern Europe, the story is a slightly bit different. The level of living here is very low. So the price of converting a van is actually pretty costly. It took us some time um, and we're still saving up for the van, but then the cost of living overall could be a lot lower, but that's just something we have to take a step into the void and see what happens. 25 is having your own space. I obviously at this age do not have enough to buy my own flat or buy my own house or buy my own piece of land, but I can buy my own van. To have something, to buy something that is going to be entirely yours. That is amazing, my friends. You dropped something. Now, after having learned all those things and having a story behind us that also um, opens the opportunity for an entirely new business venture, which is van conversions, as, as it is a subject that is becoming increasingly popular, which has not um, yet been revealed here so much. We could be the first company in the Balkans or the entire Eastern Europe to be doing van conversions. So that is something I'm excited to see happen which very likely will one day. Papi! Tiki! Now speaking of business, it also adds opportunities for my current business to expand because as a freelance photographer and videographer, I can now be available around the country and outside if people know that I travel more. It's something I can indeed advertise and say I am available wherever I'm needed without any extra cost of travel or accommodation or things like that, which you know, it's, it is an, a good financial plus because it just expands, opens more doors for you. Number 28 is um, content based again, since I love photography and vlogging, this is going to create a massive subject and topic to create um, all kinds of content about and I'm really looking forward to it from the day that I'm going to go look that we're gonna go look at our first van to the day we actually live in it. I want to document every single aspect of it. 
Me too. Now, if we develop this correctly and have adequate social media, it also um, expands the doors for advertising and product placement and merch and things like that, which is an alternative industry. It kind of complements the whole freelance lifestyle that we were talking about throughout this video. And of course, maybe most importantly after all of this is that it opens up a lot more time for personal creative projects, new projects that we can work on together. And that pretty much thumbs up the 30 reasons um, why we want to live in a van. That's not to say that van life is all positive. There are plenty of negative aspects, um, reasons why you may not be able to do it or why you should at least consider several types if you want to get into it. But that is a video for another day, which we're going to do as well because we want to have a realistic approach and not um, everything's beautiful, even though everything's beautiful. Everything is beautiful. And the best thing about van life is the Puppy, Dorothy, my Dorothy. Guys, thank you so much for watching. It meant a lot to us. Um, we just hit 50,000 followers on our Instagram fan page, which is amazing. Like that's literally oh. something I have, wasn't planning or expecting when I started all out. So that's great. It's just a little, you know, stepping stone to us realizing our, our little journey. So feel free to follow us and tag along as we try to make our dreams a reality. We appreciate you and live your dream. Live your dreams. Follow your dreams. Yeah, Thank you, you like that? For watching. Yes, I do. I love all of you.